I'm going to call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. And then we're going to go into our remote. So Kate's going to start. Ready. As a pre preliminary matter, this is Dr. Burnham, superintendent of schools. I will do a roll call to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Chairperson Shroka. Yes. Vice Chairperson Bertrand. Did you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, Secretary Leighton. Yes. Mr. Levesque. Yes. Mrs. Ashambo? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Recording Secretary, Ms. Sue Summers. Yes. Business Manager, Mr. Michael Cassidy. Yes. And Lunenburg High School Principal, Mr. Rob McGrath. Oh, we can't hear you, Rob. Can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah. Where are they? Still can't, can't hear, you. hear you, Robbie. I thought I heard him barely. It says it's muted. It says there. it's muted on yes. when I. There he is. Barely. I can barely, barely hear him. Barely. Barely. Yes. Can you hear me? A little bit okay. better. Yes. Barely. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to hear him a little bit louder a little later in the agenda. <laughs> I'll pass it back okay. to the chairperson. Okay, good evening. In accordance with the requirements of open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recording, recorded and will be broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel at a later date. And this meeting of the Lunenburg, this is a meeting of the Lunenburg School Committee is being conducted remotely. The town of Lunenburg in response to COVID-19 coronavirus is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread and all town facilities are currently closed to the public. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, GLC 30A subsection 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 Information Center page accessed through the town manager's webpage allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comments. For this meeting, the Lunenburg School Committee is convening by telephone conference, video conference via Zoom, Zoom app, Facebook Live, etc., as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Heather Sroka, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called further. Please re remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For, the, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So today we have some business to attend to on the agenda. We have some resolutions to celebrate. We have 
We're going to be acknowledging Administrative Professionals Day, which was April 22nd, National Principals Day, which was Friday, May 1st, National School Lunch Day Hero, which was May 1st, School Nurses, oh wait, National Teacher Appreciation Day, which was yesterday, and they are where they're being celebrated all week, School Nurses Day, which was is today, and they are also celebrated all week. So we will each be reading one of those resolutions when we get to that section. So first, um, we're going to say thank you to everyone for all the hard work that they do in our district. Um, they're, they're, made, they're doing a great job right now as we are remote learning for, I think, uh, well, it's the ninth week at home. Remote learning, it's the sixth, is it the sixth week? Are we in the it, it seems to just blend one one week no. right the next. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I just feel like we're in May, okay? And to May. So <laughs> they just finished their last, they, they just got their grades for the last, the, for quarter three, right? Quarter Correct. three just Correct. was, um, was just, yeah. So, all right, so, so we have first public comment will be agenda items only. Second public comment will be for um, anything that is, um, and under this falls under the school committee purview. So do we have anybody that has any public comment to make right now? Do you see anyone? Anybody raising their hand? I don't see anyone, do you? I, I don't see anybody. No, okay. No. So no. we will go, um, we did not get the minutes in our, in, our um, in time, so we're going to go right over that. So we have, um, line item transfers to review and approve. Um, is Mr. Cassidy here? Oh, there he is. He is. <laughs> so I will, um, I'll turn this over to Mr. Cassidy, um, and I will also unmute Ms. Delanda, who is also here, just in case um, there are any questions for him as well. Okay. Good evening, everyone. There are two uh, proposed transfers that are in front of the uh, the committee this evening. The, the first uh, transfer involves uh, moving uh, funds uh, to the Lowell High School accreditation stipend line item, which was unbudgeted, and uh, providing additional funds to the uh, uh, primary school clerk giving her some additional hours. She has worked some additional hours with registration and doing some uh, uh, work to, to help out the secretary. So that is the first transfer in front of you. Funds are coming from uh, a, a small surplus out of the, the high school teacher account and the uh, secretary account. Uh, as you recall, the secretary, secretary was hired a little late this year, so we had a, a small uh, uh, surplus in that account. So that's where that transfer is, um, that, that's in front of you. The, the, uh, the second um, transfer is really shifting uh, a variety of uh, facilities and grounds accounts, uh, 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 surplus accounts uh, to projects that we're hoping to close uh, the, the end of the school year. So um, what you've got here in front of you is uh, st strictly uh, facilities and grounds, uh, funds being shifted around. Uh, one thing that I want you to, uh, to, to understand is that we are getting a, a head start on our custodial supplies for the summer. Ordinarily, uh, we start purchasing that with the next year, uh, the next fiscal year funds. Uh, this shift will allow us to um, uh, make some of those purchases now. And then uh, I know it was a big concern of the committee um, and the public at the last meeting about potentially w where would we find money for um, uh, virus related uh, responses within the school. So this is, this is a, uh, this might free, this will free up some money uh, for some of those purchases uh, when they're needed next year. So, um, Mr. Launder, I don't know if you want to add anything uh, to, to your transfer or, um, I know there's a lot of details here. There's a lot of, uh, uh, maybe there's a special project you might want to highlight that 
that will be reflected in this transfer? Yeah, I, I think I, the, what I'd say about it is, is roughly about uh, half of what we're looking to transfer would actually go to purchase things that we would normally expect to come out of next year's budget. Uh, so that's the idea to try to get some flexibility for next year. Uh, but th those are primarily the custodial supplies that was mentioned, as well as uh, some ground supplies uh, for uh, playground mulch uh, and some line paint for, you know, for sports. Um, these are things that if we don't, you know, if the sports program doesn't need them, we can only hold them, hold them and they stay good for a long time. So, uh, so I, I thought that the important thing was to uh, take care of some, some uh, a small number of building repairs that we need to do, and also to try to be able to get some flexibility for next year. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Kathy or Mr. Londa in regards to the line item transfers? No. No? 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 Okay. So I'll take a motion Thank you. to approve the line item transfers as presented. This is Jim Lovick. I'll make a motion to accept the line item transfers as pre presented. <laughs> um, this is I'll Carol Ashenbo. I will second. I will second. Okay. All in favor? Roll, 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 roll. roll. Yeah. Mrs. Ashenbo? Yes. Mr. Lovick? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Schroka? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Londa. Um, superintendent's report. So I will let you know that we haven't uh, received any new guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed uh, since the updated guidance that was released on remote learning. Um, we do anticipate that uh, we will have another update within about a week's time. Uh, so we'll have more to report next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I wanted to just keep you updated relative to uh, the remote learning and the supports that we're providing. Uh, currently, we are engaging in discussion at each of our schools regarding remote learning feedback we are receiving from families and students. We will likely be making small adjustments to practice, as I mentioned last meeting. Um, any of those changes that are made will be communicated to students and families by their principals and teachers. Uh, teachers and administrators have also been making calls to families just as a check-in to see how things are going. We will also be scheduling some building-based drop-in meetings through either Zoom or Google Meet for parents. This will provide an opportunity for families to share how remote learning is going for them and we know that this is a stressful experience for many families, um, but it will also provide them an opportunity to connect with each other and hear from each other uh, that there are similar concerns probably for all families in town. Um, the drop-in meetings um, just provide us a vehicle to connect face-to-face um, -face and reassure family that they're not alone in their struggle and that we are here for them. Our behavioral health staff will be part of these drop-in meetings. Um, we're thinking that they may be able to offer parents some concrete things, strategies they might be able to use that may be helpful. I also conducted some drop-in meetings for our secondary age students. Uh, actually had, had the lunch chats today. Uh, I hope to schedule at least one more of these student lunch chats um, before we finish the year. Um, I am also hosting my second round of drop-in meetings for staff at each of our schools, just as a check-in to talk to them directly about how they're managing uh, the work-life balance and, and the stress that has accompanied the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and teachers are, are also posting office hours and help sessions. Um, I will also mention that I attended an SEL, Social Emotional Learning Webinar through the Massachusetts Partnership for Youth this week. And Lunenburg 
was highlighted by the presenter, um, we had a full slide that showcased all of the different supports that we are already implementing as a model for other districts that might have been participating in that webinar. So um, I, I didn't know that there was going to be a slide <laughs> for Lunenburg, but I was quite happy to see it. So um, it, it's nice to see that we're on the cutting edge uh, in terms of the, the kinds of uh, supports that we're providing for students, families, and staff during this closure. As Mrs. Shoka already mentioned, uh, we will be reading resolutions later this evening in recognition of those professionals for whom a National Day of Recognition has occurred this week or in recent weeks. However, I, I would really like to uh, take a moment to acknowledge and state my appreciation and gratitude for all of our staff, our custodial and maintenance team, our food service uh, staff, the paraprofessionals, nurses, secretaries, behavioral health staff, teachers, Everybody has been doing a remarkable job supporting students and families and each other, uh, especially in these recent weeks. So while the bus drivers are not part of our staff, they also have been very supportive of our students. And a couple of weeks ago, they actually created a video message for the students to let them know that they are missed. And those videos were shared out in, um, but each, each principal shared the, the video link out. So I just wanna uh, have a great big thank you for all of the folks who, who work with us and for us to support our, our students. I'd also like to thank our parents. I think that they too should celebrate National Teacher Appreciation Week mm -hmm. as they have become our teacher partners during the school closure. So to all of our parents, I say happy National Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, you're doing a great job for us as well. Thank you very, very much. And lastly, to all of the members of the community that gave so generously to our food gift card drive to support our students and families in need of a little assistance at this time. And I will just remind everybody that um, we collected uh, $8,000 in donations for the food gift card drive. So thank you to, to everyone for the support, much appreciated. And that's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, so our first um, new business item is a personnel report from Mr. Cassidy, correct? Correct. Hi everyone. So I'm just uh, reporting out on uh, personnel report uh, and personnel activity. Uh, so uh, it's been a while since you've received a report um, I was just, I was checking and it seemed like it was uh, mid fall that you received your last report. I've got to admit that they have, it's been a good year for our staff. There hasn't been a lot of uh, a turnover. So uh, hence not, not a lot to report. So we'll notice that there's a few uh, uh, older uh, hires in here, but um, I basically accumulated them until I could report uh, out to you. Uh, it's, it's important to note we have two uh, teachers retiring on June 30th from Lunenburg. Uh, uh, Carolyn Finch, our school nurse at uh, Lunenburg High School, is retiring after 22 years uh, within the district. And uh, Cindy Rosencrantz our uh, ELL teacher uh, who services many students in, in, in uh, many of our buildings is retiring on June 30th. She's been with us since 2013, but she came, uh, she's been a teacher in Massachusetts since 1997. So uh, we're losing, uh, we're losing some, uh, some, uh, some experience uh, and uh, they were both both employees will be will be missed by staff and students. So, if you see them around town, um, well, keep your distance. But but uh, you know, yeah, obviously <laughs> greet them and uh, wish them happy retirement. Uh, in addition, uh, we did have some new hires over the last few months prior to the hiring freeze, and that's our recording secretary, uh, Susan Summers. Uh, Alicia Corrigan, our paraprofessional at the primary, 
uh, school and uh, Kathleen Hansen, a part-time uh, custodian at TCP. So that's all I have to report um, tonight. Uh, I guess the only action I, I'm asking the school committee is to uh, uh, include this report as an official record um, uh, for, the, for this meeting. Okay, so I, I'll take a motion to include this as a, an official record for the meeting from one of you. This is Jim Levesque. I will make a motion to accept the personnel report as presented by Mr. Cassidy. Carol Ashambo, I will second it. Um, all in favor, we need roll call vote. This is Ashambo. Yes. Mr. Levesque. Yes. Mrs. Bertrand. Yes. Mr. Leighton. Yes. Mrs. Shoka. Yes. Okay, and now we have our five resolutions. So we're each going to read one. The first one is going to be the Administrative Professional Professionals Day, and Wendy is going to read that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Administrative Professionals Day Resolution. Whereas Administrative Professionals Day was created in 1952 to recognize the significance of the profession and acknowledge the importance and value of the position to America's companies, businesses, and institutions, both large and small, including public schools. And whereas Administrative Professionals in Lunenburg Public Schools play key roles, bear many responsibilities, and are crucial to the efficient functioning and smooth running of day-to-day -day operations as they assist educators, principals, and students, and parents. And whereas Administrative Professionals Day was observed nationwide this year on April 22, 2020, therefore be it resolved that the United Federation of Teachers, UFT, encouraged all of its members to thank their administrative professionals and celebrate the exemplary work of administrative professionals on that day. Signed, Heather Soroka, Chair of Lunenburg School Committee, attached to Kate Burnham, Superintendent. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one is National Principals Day. Um, Jim, do you wanna read that one? I can do that. Please. Thank you. National Principals Day Resolution. Whereas the vision, dedication, and determination of a principal provides the mobilizing force behind any school reform effort, whereas principals are expected to be educational visionaries, instructional leaders, assessment experts, disciplinarians, community builders, public relations experts, budget analysts, facility managers, special programs administrators, and guardians of various legal, contractual, and policy mandates and initiatives, as well as being entrusted with the education and development of young people, the most valuable resource. And whereas principals set the academic tone for their schools and work collaboratively with teachers to develop and maintain high curriculum standards, develop mission statements and set performance goals and objectives for schools to achieve excellent educational excellence. And whereas the Lunenburg School Committee honors each such exemplary elementary, middle and high school level public school leaders committed to serving students from pre-kindergarten to grade 12 in their profession, be it resolved in honor of the service of all elementary, middle level, and high school principals, and to recognize the importance of their school leadership so that every child has access to a high quality education and to celebrate national leader accomplishments. The day of May 1st is hereby designated to Lunenburg to be National Principals Day. Uh, signed by Heather Soroka, Chair Lunenburg School Committee, attest Kate Burnham, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Jim. And on a um, personal note, I'll one. say thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Um, National School Lunch Day Hero, Carol. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> National School Lunch Hero Day. Whereas nutritious meals at school are an essential part of the school day, and whereas the staff of the district school meals and nutrition department are committed to providing healthful, nutritious meals to the district's children. And whereas the men and women who prepare and serve school meals 
help nurture our children through their daily interaction and support. And whereas the date of Friday, May 1st, 2020, was School Lunch Hero Day. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Lunenburg School District expresses its deep appreciation to these valuable food service employees and commends their good work on behalf of children. Signed, Heather Sroka, Chair, Lunenburg School Committee, and Kate Burnham, attest, Superintendent of Schools. And thank you very much to all the school lunch people and all the extra things they have done to go above and beyond to keep our kids fed throughout this particular trying time. Thank you, Carol. Brian, I thought you could read the Teacher Appreciation Day one. Sure. <laughs> National Teacher Appreciation Day and Week Resolution. Whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education, and whereas teachers encounter students of widely differing backgrounds and countries, future depends upon providing quality education to all students. And whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students and performing community service, and whereas our community recognizes and supports its teachers in educating the children of the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lindenberg School Committee proclaims May 4th through the 8th, 2020, to be the National Teacher Appreciation Week, and May 5th to be the National Teacher Appreciation Day. Be it further resolved that the Lindenberg School Committee strongly encourages all members of our community to join with personally expressing appreciation to our teachers for their dedication and devotion to their work. Signed, Heather Schroka, Chair, Lunenburg School Committee, Test Kate Burnham, Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. <laughs> um, I will read the School Nurses Day resolution. Whereas children today face more complex and life-threatening health problems requiring care in school. And whereas school nurses support the health and educational success of children and youth by providing access to care when children's cognitive development is at its peak. And whereas school nurses are members of school-based mental health teams, and whereas school nurses understand the link between health and learning and are in the position to make a positive difference for children every day. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lunenburg School Committee celebrates and, and acknowledges the accomplishments of school nurses in their efforts of meeting the needs of today's students by improving the delivery, delivery of health care in our schools and offers gratitude for the district's school nurses who contribute to our local communities by helping students stay healthy in school and ready to learn. Be it further resolved that the Lunenburg School Committee proclaims May 6, 2020 to be schools nurses, School Nurses Day and strongly encourages all members of our community to join with it in personally express, expressing appreciation to our nurses for their dedication and devotion to their work. Signed, Heather Swaroka, Chair, Lunenburg School Committee, attested by Kate Burnham, Superintendent. Um, thank you so much for all the hard work that each, uh, each group here does. We're gonna be losing one of these key members of the school nurses resolute group, and that is very upsetting. She is the pillar of our nursing staff um, a great leader and um, just a genuinely nice person. So, um, Jeff, thank you to all of the school nurses. Thank you to the lunch staff. Thank you to all of our principals. Thank you to our teachers. And thank you to our administrative staff. We appreciate all of you. So, our next order, we have old business school calendar 2019-2020. Mr. McGrath, I believe. Correct. Hello, can you hear me better? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So, um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for, for having me here this evening. Um, I wanted to just kind of start out by saying I've been trying to gather um, as much information as I could um, around graduation. I had a school council meeting um, about a week and a half ago, and the school council meeting went very, very well. Um, I had a very large showing of, of students um, as well as parents who showed up at the school council meeting. Um, 
all students and parents who um, expressed their views in the comments were all very professional. Um, they all came from a very caring spot. Um, and it was um, made loud and clear to me that there was, um, uh, they wanted to be a push to kind of look at graduation and not hold it on the sixth. So with that being said, I needed to kind of look at the feasibility of, of moving graduation um, or versus having it, keeping it on the sixth, looking at, you know, the guidelines now. I contacted um, actually Mrs. Finch, who um, I, I agree with you, Mrs. Schroker, who is a pillar in our community. I wanted to kind of, you know, get some information from the Board of Health. Um, she directed me um, to a man who's very nice, uh, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name, Jim Gareffi. Um, he's the Neshoba District um, Sanitarian, and I had a very long conversation with him around the thoughts of, of possibly pushing off graduation to, the, to August 1st and um, the feasibility of, of the guidelines, um, what, what he would think. Um, he, he, was, he was great. Um, he obviously said he didn't have a crystal ball, so he couldn't tell me what the guidelines were going to be on August 1st. Um, you know, so uh, my, my question was, um, right now we can only meet as a group of 10, and I kind of gave him some numbers, and, and we just had a, a long talk around um, the likelihood of maybe 100 gallery, 150, what his thoughts were. Um, he wanted to make it very clear that, you know, th these were his opinions and that he was not, um, you know, he didn't have any inside information or anything like that. So in getting that information from him helped me uh, kind of formulate some decisions. And then what I wanted to do was kind of meet with my, um, my graduation council, which is the advisors, um, the secretaries, my assistant principal and myself, because um, I needed to get information around um, planning because we have to we have to book third party members, our, the chairs, the stage, all the microphone equipment. So I needed to get some information on if I did push it to the first, is it still available? Or we have to look for a different chair company. Well, it, it all worked out that the companies that we were going to use um, are available um, on August 1st. And so with that being said, I wanted to then meet with the senior class um, and kind of go over some of the pros and cons in having all this information with doing a graduation on June 6th under the current guidelines. We, are, we, we think we're going to be getting more information on, on the 18th, but just in a planning process un, under our current guidelines of doing some type of motorcade graduation on June 6th. And I kind of, I, I explained that in school council and I kind of went over that again with um, all of the students versus moving it to August 1st with trying to do some type of hybrid traditional social distant, um, that's a mouthful to say, social distant graduation based on the, the guidelines that I don't know what they'll be. Um, so I kind of did a listing for the students because my ultimate uh, goal was to have the students uh, take a poll because I wanted to get their input. This is, this is their class, this is their graduation. So I wanted to get a direct school poll, but I wanted them to have all the information first before they, they made a decision. So enlisting the pros and cons, I kind of went through, um, you know, the pros of, I know I can pull off a June 6 graduation under the guidelines. Um, I can use the funds from saving the chairs. And I kind of went through a lot of that at my school council um, and explaining what my plan was for the motorcade uh, drive up graduation. The cons were, you know, it, it's not a traditional graduation. Um, they, they would feel separated. Um, they would also feel bad if, if the, some of the guidelines were lifted that um, they would have missed out on possibly having some type of traditional graduation. And some of the traditions that they have like walking across the stage and um, seeing their classmates even from a distance they you know they said in hearing speeches um those were those were some major cons moving the graduation to august 1st some of the pros are there is a chance um for a hybrid style graduation they you know there is a chance they'll be walking across the stage yeah you know receiving the the jacket of sleeve of their diploma we could hear speeches um there, they could sing their class song. They wouldn't be gathering, but they could sing their class song theoretically. Um, and then, you know, there's maybe some other traditions we could talk about. 
the problem with that is I don't, I, it's very hard to plan for something when you don't know what the rules are. So that's kind of the difficulty of the August 1st graduation is I don't know what the social distancing guidelines are going to be. If they cap the number of gathering at 150, you know, theoretically or just say 150 with 100 students and I need about 30 or so, 35 or so essential school staff, I pretty much would have to have a, a social, a social distant graduation of 150, which would mean just students and staff and they wouldn't be allowed any guests. Now, if it's 200, 250, it, again, it's, it's difficult because I don't know what the guidelines are. But if you have 100 students and each brings a guest, that's 200 people without even getting into school staff or equipment people or, you know, custodians and things of that nature. For a, a student to be able to bring two guests, you know, you're, you're looking at about 300 people and again, without school staff and so forth and so on. So it's just hard to predict what the guidelines are going to be come August 1st. Um, so... I wanted the students to understand all of those risk factors before they made any decisions because I think it's important to be as transparent as I could be. There would be nothing worse than if a student, you know, shows up at graduation and would only be able to have one parent. Um, you know, I, it's just I wanted to be, I guess, as transparent as I could be because I don't know what the guidelines are going to be. So with all that being said, um, I did do the Google Meet. I did tell the class that I was going to be sending out a poll. I had 75% um, uh, about a majority of the class voted and it was a landslide um, vote of they wanted to move graduation to August 1st. Um, so the vote was, was very clear that the student body, the class of 2020 wants to um, move graduation to August 1st. So my recommendation is going to be to the superintendent um, that we um, move graduation to August 1st. Obviously the school committee, the, you control the calendar, so that's something you're going to have to um, address this evening, but that's gonna be my recommendation um, to, the, to the superintendent, to Dr. Burnham. Um, but just trying to be on record that I will have to follow all social distancing guidelines that are in place August 1st. You know, I have to make sure Number one, all students and staff are safe. Number two, I'm not putting the district in any form of liable spot. I wanna make sure that we, we I, I have no choice. Um, and so again, I wanna try to hold as close to a traditional graduation as it's possible because I, I understand how valuable um, and how important this time is for students. This is a, this is a life event. And um, I know the seniors um, have had a rough go um, I've said this a few times in many meetings, my heart breaks for the class of 2020, not only for the high school students, but also college students. Um, this is not how they envisioned the ending of their career um, at Lunenburg High School. And, and, I, and I truly um, appreciate that. So my, my senior class has spoken. Um, you know, you're not gonna get everyone to agree on any poll, but they have certainly spoken and they want to, um, even though the risk factors are there, they wanna move uh, graduation to August 1st. So that is going to be my recommendation. But again, I have to abide by all of the social distancing guidelines come August 1st. Any questions? Thank you. Um, does, I would just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to um, talk to the senior class yesterday in your meet, your Zoom meet, and, um, and clarifying all of that for them um, before they did take that poll. Uh, I think some of them were informed, but I don't think all of them had any idea what was going on, um, as usual. Um, and thank you for just taking the time to think about it, reaching out to everyone who you reached out to to get more information um, so that you could make an educated decision in regards to graduation. I know that all of the senior parents appreciate that, that it wasn't just hastily done and that you really took um, the kids at heart when you, when you made this decision. Um, to make this recommendation. Of course, it's now up to the superintendent to tell us what she thinks. But does well, anybody have any questions, Ms. McGrath? No? Um, I have a question. Sure. If, if the, hopefully, everything is fine by August 1st, that we can do some form of a traditional um, graduation, 
But if it, they do say no more than 100 people or something can meet in any one spot, then it would not be too late to do some form of motorcade graduation like you had thought? There, would, there could be something, but the problem, Mrs. Archambault, would be the funds would be spent for the right. chairs, the sound equipment. So all of the other things that I was planning on with the motorcade, with rental of screens and all of the, the banners and things of that nature, um, that would not be able to happen. Um, you know, and if it was a hundred or so, then I could possibly do, you know, and again, this is the, the difficulty is I, I don't know what some of the students are envisioning in their head. It might be very different than what I'm able to actually do. But if I have to do a morning graduation of half the alphabet and then, a mo you know, depending on the guy, I, I don't know, you know, like you said, if it's a hundred people, I can't, um, I can't have the whole class there. And, right. you know, I know that's something they want to be with their class. I, that was very clear, but again, I have to follow all of the social distancing guidelines. So in that scenario that you gave, Carol, I, the options would be I might do half the alphabet in the morning and then half in the afternoon. Um, that's probably the best I would be able to do. Or some type of drive up where they kind of just get their diploma and it would be a photo op, but there wouldn't be any of the extras that I was talking about um, when I was proposing the, the motorcade graduation, because there was a lot of thought put into the motorcade with really trying to make it special um, because, you know, I, I, no matter what I did, I wanted to try to do the best and, and do everything I could for the class in the best way I could, um, no matter what I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing. So um, I'll know more as we get closer and I'll be able to plan that out. I'm definitely a planner. That's something I, that's why the August 1st thing, I had reservations because I don't know. And when I don't know, I can't plan and that I'm not in a good spot when I can't plan. Well, we certainly appreciate all the thought that went into it. It's very clear that a lot of thought and a lot of care for our students went into your decision. So thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? I, have a, I had a question. Wendy, okay. Hi, Mr. McGrath. I, I too echo the, um, the appreciation for all of the um, you know, the, the depth and exploration of, of you know, all, possib all possibilities and, and landing with what the majority of students and, and families were really hoping for in the class of 2020. Just a question regarding um, looking forward. Um, in this time, obviously, you can't plan for what you don't know, as you've said, but will there be multiple plans Possibly, and will you still work with the same, you know, with the senior class, with their advisor, um, you know, with with Dr. Burnham, other administrators, to try and come up with as many possible plans? It would be a plan for August first, um, and yeah, it would yes. have to go up, right? And I mean, once I know with the social distancing guidelines, um, I'm not going to be able to move the date. Um, I'm also reluctant to say, you know, could I? Theoretically, if there was weather, move it inside. My, my concern with that is any moving anything inside, there might even be more restrictions, um, you know. So typically the way it's worked when, we, when we're not in the situation of COVID-19, I would be looking at the weather app and trying to make a call on where the chairs would be set up, whether it would be in the gymnasium or whether it would be on the football field. Um, but I don't believe I'm gonna have, you know, I, again, I don't think I'll have that option. Um, but I will certainly do whatever I can, Mrs. Bertram, on the first within the guidelines. Um, you know, I don't want to have to split the class because I know that was a big, they would love to all be together. But again, it's, it's, it's going to be up to the guidelines. But I'm hoping to have something on the first, you know, um, some iteration of some form, even if it has to switch to a, a, a drive up at that point. Uh, but August 1st is pretty much the, the drop dead date. Like that's when it has to happen um, because all funds will be expended and those contracts will have to be paid no matter what, whether we use the chairs or not, if it's lightning or rain or whatever the case may be. So I am willing to work around the guidelines to the best of my ability, but I don't know how much flexibility I would have to move the date. Does that, does that answer your question? No, I don't it think it does. I, well, I wasn't, I wasn't clear in my question. I guess what I was okay. wondering is, will, will 
the same stakeholders be working with you through this to come up with plans, po multiple possible plans for August 1. Say, for example, we were at, you know, 50 or more in a gathering, 100 yep. or more in a gathering, because those, yep. are, those are realistic possibilities. Would there be possible plans for, say, both scenarios? Say, if there was, if it was at 100, this is what it could look like, or if it was at 50. Yep. Once, once I have that, in, yes. When, once I have that information, that's what I'm going to go off of. And then I'm going to have to, I guess the, I, I guess my, I guess my only answer to that is, you know, for example, if they come out on May 18th and say this can happen, that's what I'm going to plan for. But I don't know. Um, I guess the, I, the governor, if he comes out the day before graduation, I don't know if I could make a change. You know, right, I guess the right. timing oh, yeah, of it is going to be, yeah. obvious, you know, obvious. so I, that, I guess, but that's the heart. But yes, if I can, I mean, you know, if I'm at a, if, if I'm at a split graduation because it's a hundred, say, and then a week before they say you can have a, a grad, uh, you can have a gathering of 250, switching that from a split to a, to a full graduation, I don't think would be a, a, a big deal. Um, you know, I, I think we could figure that out. I think that's something we could do um, because it all, would all be on the same day and we're ordering, we're ordering enough, we're gonna be ordering enough chairs to make sure we can accommodate um, students. You know what I mean? We're definitely going to be able to do that. So, um, you know, our hope is to have some type of social distance gathering. That is graduation, that is, that is my hope. And, um, you know, I would love students to be able to have, you know, two guests. I mean, I think that would be best case scenario. But again, I don't know right. if, I, you know, but that's our plan is to, to order for that. Because um, I think that's the best case scenario we're going to have, in my opinion. And then, oh, okay. well, I was just going to ask if you're, if you're, thinking that working in the same way where you've included some students and the advisors, will you still kind of, in terms of the next steps and stages of planning and thoughts around possibilities for that day? Um, yes. Will, will you still work with students, advisors, yes? Yes, the advisors are going to, so the, it's, it's always gonna be through the advisors, there's always, you know, all the planning is always through the advisors. They will be in constant contact with the students on kind of where we're at and, you know, letting them know and keep them, you know, the, the two class advisors will be keeping the students updated as we move forward with guidelines and what the expectations are going to be. That's how it's always done. And then, you know, with speeches and all that stuff, we will follow all the rules. And we, you know, speeches will be passed in ahead of time. And, um, you know, we're going to try to work out some of the some of the traditions, you know, the class song. We, we hope to be able to, you know, we're going to sing it, but we're not going to be able to gather together. But we're, we're definitely going to try to do as many of the traditions as we can under the social distancing. Um, you know, I know the biggest thing that came across is the students want to be able to walk across the stage. That's probably end all be all that was, that came across very loud and clear. Um, so that is why I'm making the recommendation um, to move graduation to the superintendent to August 1st, uh, because that, that was probably the biggest thing that came across in, in all of my meetings and in and, and Zooms and phone calls with, with everyone. So my Thank question you. for you in regards to the stage, what maybe some thought could be to given to if none of this changes and they can, and you were thinking of the drive up, maybe they can just get a photo up walking across the stage instead of the drive up, because that is clearly the most important thing to them. So maybe is the stage part of what you rent? Yes. Is there, okay. Yes. So if we're yeah. renting, if there's the stage rented and they can have their big hoo-ha, because it's just not, the governor doesn't recommend any social gatherings, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you could just organize a time slot for each student to be able to walk across the stage and their parent could get a picture. I would, um, Mrs. Stroke, I would be open to a lot of those ideas. Okay. Um, once okay. I know the guidelines, uh, as I said, ultimately, right. You know, frankly, I don't care if I'm there for eight hours, if it's going to make the, you know, if I can help okay. in any way for the students, that's, that's just how I am, because I think enough okay. has been lost for the seniors. So yes, I will, I will figure something out. Um, okay. Because it would be rent, you know, we would, it would if be it's hours rented for them. anyway. Yeah, it would be, I would figure something cool. out. But, okay. um, you know, the weather is, that could yeah. be the, you know, that's, yeah. so if it's lightning and things and, you know, but, um, I am going to do everything I possibly can to have an event okay. within the 
social distancing guidelines. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, Jim. I, this, yeah, this is Jim Obeck. Um, along the lines of what Wendy's talking about, we're talking about you know potential ideas and, and the contingency plans. Um, I, I I understand the hesitancy to want to try to plan without having any further information. Um, one of the things that that I would think about would be, you know, if we are able to use the field, um, are we able to use half the field for a hundred people and the other half for another hundred people? That way, you don't have 200 people all in one space, but they're all occupying the same general vicinity. And then the, you can have you know, half of the class on one side, the other class, class on the other side. I don't know if that's a possibility. Um, you know, just thinking, trying, trying to think outside of the box so that the students can, you know, I'm hearing two, two, uh, two themes that they really want to be with each other and two, that they really want to walk across the, the stage so if as there's a possibility, as, at least have them available so that, you know, even if they can see each other, I don't know. Yep. No, we, we have plenty of space. As long as it would be allowed, Mr. Levesque, um, certainly I would be talking with the superintendent and, you know, legal and who, you know, depending on the guidelines, just to make sure that we're not um, encompassing any liability from, from the school standpoint. You know, we just, right. as long as it would be, and I would make any phone call I would need to make, um, but yeah, I... I would be more than willing to think outside the box and, you know, spray paint areas where, you know, Mr. Launder and his, his guys can set things up and we'll socially distant. We'll, we'll certainly all work together and figure it out. Um, you know, but as long as the state and local authorities would allow me to do something like that, absolutely. I would, I would figure it out. Um, I just have to follow along what the guidelines and the local authorities are going to allow. And then I guess I have a question for the superintendent or the chair, um, yep. as a parent of a senior, should I be abstaining from any vote on this topic? I also have a senior, so that would leave three people. Mm -hmm. Which is a quorum. Yep. yep. It would have to be unanimous. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that as, as a parent of a senior, we should probably not be voting on this topic. No, probably not. <laughs> Just like Washington D.C. So yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I think a, that's okay. Uh, Brian, Brian Layden, I had a question um, for Principal McGrath. Uh, have you been in touch with the Lunenburg Cable Access to to potentially get it on cable too for potentially family members who cannot attend? I have not been in touch, but that was my plan. Yes, I plan to have it videotaped. Yes, great question and. Yes, mm. haven't done it yet, but that is part of the plan, right? Thanks. Okay, um, Dr. Burnham, how about you? What is your input? Um, I also share the same hesitation that Mr. McGrath has around um, postponing to a date that, that we really don't know uh, what the ground rules are going to be. Um, for all we know, they could be tighter than they are now. Um, but I think uh, that I also agree with Mr. McGrath that the students um, are the most important piece in this decision. And, um, you know, I really and truly appreciate all the time and effort that Mr. McGrath has put into um, trying to create options for the kids to consider. And, um, given that so many of them have expressed that they would prefer to postpone until August 1st, even with the risk that it won't look like the traditional graduation they're hoping for, um, I'm going to support Mr. McGrath's recommendation that we postpone graduation until August 1st. So um, now um, we need a vote from the, the committee that can vote. Oh. <laughs> Chairperson Soroka, I will make a motion to yeah. alter the 2019-2020 school calendar, updating graduation and moving it from June 6th to August 1st. Brian Leighton, I second. All right, so I will do a roll call vote. And um, when I call your name, if you must, you just register that your vote is an abstention. Mrs. Ashambo? 
Yes. Mr. Levesque? Abstain. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Shroka? Abstained. Thank you so much, Mr. McGrath, for taking the time to come and taking the time to think about the students and doing what you think is the best for them. Um, I can tell you that I appreciate it. I think Mr. Levesque appreciates it. I know many parents appreciate it. And I think that the students will really appreciate it once they hear that you have done that. Thank you it's, too, it's, Dr. I'm, I'm planning to send that out in my newsletter this Friday, but I, okay. I obviously wanted to make sure that the school committee voted on it first before I sent any information. Right. Thank you so much. No Thank problem. Um, and okay, so next order of business is the budget update. Would that be Mr. Mr. Cassidy? Cassidy. You're muted. Where yep. is he? Well, we're working on getting him unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. I was done. Yeah, I was done. There you are. Uh, okay. So uh, this is an update uh, on um, uh, coronavirus-related uh, expenses uh, that the district uh, is incurring since the, the closure and, and actually prior. So the, the origin or, the, or the, this request, uh, and I, I forget who made it verbally at the last meeting, but uh, I agreed that I'd provide some so, uh, uh, kind of an expense report uh, at the next meeting. So this is, this is a result of a request from the school committee. So we broke, uh, the expenses down into uh, three areas from the report. Our facility and grounds has been keeping track of uh, some of our ex their expenses related to uh, cleaning, um, food service a program, which is the grab and go program. And finally, you have a report on some no, let's not call it uh, corona uh, virus related expenses, but some additional expenses that I had uh, uh, had indicated to the school committee that the, the local budget would have to absorb and that, that's salary and wages for the, the cafeteria staff and the extended day. So you have those numbers. So let's, uh, let's talk about some of those numbers right now. So the, uh, the first number that you have uh, is the facility and grounds. And um, uh, most of our POs were initiated uh, uh, in March and in April. There are a couple earlier ones in, um, in February. So the, the reason why we're, we're tracking the ones in February is um, we, um, we attended a webinar from uh, MEMA on um, uh, potential getting reimbursed for some of the expenses that municipalities have incurred. And the, um, even though that, I'm just gonna get these specific dates. It sounds, the, the declaration date by the governor was 327, uh, 2020. Uh, they uh, are requesting that uh, uh, the, the emergency started uh, uh, the, uh, started on January 20th. They, they're identifying that as the incident date for the state. Uh, so that's why we're going back to some of the February expenses. We're trying to include those. Uh, we're including those just to show you uh, what we've expended. Uh, these expenses on uh, Mr. Londa's report, we're anticipating that we'll be submitting reimbursement uh, th through, the, uh, through the town and with the town through MEMA to get reimbursement. And um, so we're gonna, be, we're gonna be tracking those um, continuously and, and we'll coordinate that reimbursement with the town. So, so currently, uh, 
we've uh, got $10,584.72 uh, for a facility and ground related costs. And the, the report gives you a breakdown of some of the things that we have uh, purchased. That uh, could have been much uh, higher if we had stayed in uh, school a little bit longer. Mm. But um, um, you know, some, some of these are, are for our custodial staff, our just uh, regular staff, cleaning supplies. So that, that's a, that update. We will, um, I'll say this now and I'll also say it at the end of my presentation. I'll, I'll give you another report probably in about a month uh, on some of these costs. So that's what we have right now for facilities and grounds. Uh, the next sheet is our food service program, our grab and go program. We have, uh, right now we've got a, uh, uh, a cost of about $18,564. Some of that has not been expended yet. Uh, we're waiting for invoices from our, uh, our vendors. Uh, th these costs should be covered uh, by the state and federal food service program. So our reimbursable costs through the state and federal government should cover these costs. But I'm we are monitoring these. Th those costs will not cover uh, salary and wages, but they will cover the cost of uh, uh, the grab and go program. And then finally, um, uh, this is just a report on salary and wages, uh, you know, for our food service program. Uh, we've currently uh, spent uh, $30,530 $30 on salary and wages through April 25th. And through our extended day program, we're at $15,832. And I just want, I just want to give you uh, an update. So I am projecting at this point that the food service salary and wages against the local budget this year will be $65,158. And that those are closure related costs. Uh, that's a little bit lower than uh, what I had projected earlier uh, to the school committee. It's uh, the reason why our, um, some of the employees are participating in the new uh, uh, Family First um, program, which is an FMLA program for uh, uh, family members who uh, have trouble with daycare and have to stay home. So they're only getting two thirds of their salary. And then also um, there's a, there's a uh, one or two um, cafeteria workers that are going in and off the payroll for a variety of reasons. So the cost has come down just a little. The extended day program, I'm still targeting uh, at, at $36,900, uh, give or take, um, uh, you know, $1,000. It depends on uh, the work that they do in, uh, in June. To, uh, but if the, if they work all that time, it's it will be thirty six thousand nine hundred and forty one dollars. So that is the, the the budget update on our expenses related uh, to uh, responding to the, the the virus and in the pandemic, and also some of our uh, salary and wages uh, expenses uh, due to the closure. Um, I, I would anticipate that um, the first meeting in June, um, I will provide uh, an additional update. And uh, some probably in the first meeting, there's only one meeting in, in July. Um, I, I'll provide an update at that meeting on, um, on, on what we have. The, the only risk that I that we run is that I may be uh, waiting for some invoices from uh, the food service program, but I will I will definitely give you an update in July and need be I'll give you a final update in August as well. So uh, at that point at this 
point that that is just my presentation yeah if you have any questions uh please let me know does anyone have any questions for mr cassidy no no nope. no nope. okay do you want us to accept this as a formal report mr cassidy uh you could do that i think that uh, i think that's a good action by the school committee um, I'll take a motion. Um, I can make a motion to accept the coronavirus related expenditure report as presented by Mr. Cassidy. And you are Carol Archambault. I am. Brian, this is when... second. Brian is seconding. Okay. All in favor, roll call, call vote. Mrs. Ashambo? Yes. Mr. Levesque? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Shroka? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Thank you, everyone. Um, reports. Carol, do you have anything from Finance Committee? Well, uh, the Finance Committee last met on the 30th of April, and Dr. Burnham and Mr. Cassidy were there presenting um, the 1.58% budget that we had approved. Uh, the comments from the Finance Committee seem very focused and very thoughtful. They seem to be supportive to our situation, but they have no money, <laughs> um, basically. Their comments um, included an understanding that the two new positions were in fact to um, bring to level service and to confirm the need to replace the known retirees. Um, and later, late, later in the meeting, there was a suggestion by one of the finance committee members dealing with the capital plan and that um, he felt that the, um, the elementary school asbestos program should be put off for a year was his thought because they wasn't sure there would be enough money for that. His thought was also that the design for the primary school air conditioning be put off till November, um, along with a, a couple of other pieces in the capital plan that were not ours. They didn't vote on that. That's going to be discussed and would be um, discussed further during the public hearing, which is tomorrow evening, May 7th. Um, there was really no discussion on it. He just presented, you know, if we were looking for ways to make sure we had the biggest possible um, surplus in the budget. However, these are funded through free cash. So it creates a whole different kind of uh, mechanism. It just doesn't get turned over to money that can be used in the operating budget. So it works a little bit differently, the, um, the capital plan piece. So they'll discuss that tomorrow evening. Um, they certainly had no problem with the 1.58% budget. Well, that's good news. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that was the story there. Okay, thank you. All right. Jim, did you have anything for capital planning? Uh, nope, we did not meet uh, since last time. Do we think you're going to meet again? Or do you think they're going to just talk about it and vote on it at the next finance committee meeting. Uh, I, well, we we took the vote for, for um, the capital planning, so I'm assuming it's gonna go right to the finance. Okay. With the reduced uh, right. the items. numbers. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, now um, we have public comment, which is open to all things that fall under the school committee. Do we have anybody from the public who wants to make a comment? Not seeing anything. No. 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 I'm not seeing any hands raised. No. Okay. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 20th. Correct? Correct. Okay. So I think that's it. Take a motion. Um, Jim Levesque, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 8.09 p.m. Carol Ashambo, I will second. 
All in favor? Mrs. Oshambo? Yes. Mr. Levesque? Yes. Mrs. Bertrand? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Shoka? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Stay well. Good evening. Talk to you in a few weeks. Yep. Yeah. Stay healthy. You too. Bye.